This seems as good a place as any to make camp. And rest. That's what people do, right? Rest, pray, play. You'll have to figure out your spare time yourself. I... Uh, mm, never mind. Let's settle in, shall we? <laughs> now there's a bloody devil trailing after us. Well, this gets better and better. Shop around, he said. He seems sure we won't find anything. And he might be right. We've had no luck so far. Maybe. But all that, take your time, I'll wait, nonsense. He's playing with us. He reminds me of, well, someone I used to know. And someone I like to play with people. You're a warlock. You understand how dangerous the wrong deal can be. Oh, can we? Because you've got it all figured out, I'm sure. You know who tampered with the parasite and why, and what they have planned for us. And of course you know why we're interesting enough that a devil, pardon, a cambion, would proposition us. Because if you don't know that, you may as well sign over your soul now. We may escape whatever web we're trapped in, but until we know what's going on, this Raphael has us exactly where he wants us. I couldn't help but overhear... Well, all right, I could have helped, but didn't. Anyway, I feel the same. Other than the occasional mental exchange, it's almost as if we're not infected. The voice on the ship told me I'd become a beautiful weapon. What do you think it meant? Ha! <laughs> Adorable. But your timing is awful. Whatever the Mind Flayer's plans were, those dragons spoiled them. That doesn't make our situation less dangerous. Either way, we can't take the lack of symptoms for granted. We have to find a healer. Well, I've said my piece. Get some rest. I saw you getting a lecture from our magical friend. I have to say, I thought you'd look worse, but no. Not a tentacle to be seen. Yet. Of course, first sign of change, and I'll have to stop that pretty little heart of yours. I am open to suggestions. Knives, poison, strangulation, whatever you'd prefer. I don't think poison is for me. Nor stabbing, come to think of it. I always felt decapitation was a fine choice. One good swing and then nothing. <laughs> but we were talking about you. What'll it be? Oh, I see how it is. Fine, but if they botch it, don't come bleeding to me. Drow? What do they... Hello? Hello, hello. Oh, that. Just preparing my war cry. I'm coming as fast as I can. Needs a bit of work, I reckon. I haven't been exactly forthcoming. I've got a reason of my own for going after the goblins. Don't get me wrong, Chief. I'll clear the way for the tieflings come hells or high water. But my missing eye? That's goblin work there. I was still a whelp when a goblin bruiser named Spike ripped it out of my skull. And I've got reason to think he's holed up in that camp. So don't go beheading every goblin you see. At least not till I finish my business with Spike. Salutations. There's an old saying I just made up. To fell a dragon, you must chop off its head. These goblins are organized. It's no hamhead pulling the strings. We slither through their camp and off their leaders, quick as crickets. Yeah, I've tangled with the like before. 
thick as planks. Keep smashing and they'll splinter. Living legend in the flesh. Slayer of spectres, killer of kobolds. The pride of Baldur's Gate. <laughs> mm. If you'd heard the stories, you'd hardly doubt me. The proof is in the pumpkin. As I'm sure someone once said, if you don't know me as a hero already, then I'll have to prove myself one. Shadowheart's attention is fixed upon the contents of an old journal. We... we should keep moving. Nothing. The trick of the light. But something tells me there might be a solution to some of our problems hiding in this wilderness. There's signs there was a conflict around here, some time ago, and different to what we've seen so far. Conflict needs opposing sides. Whoever they were, they must have had resources. A little investigating could turn up something of interest. Let's go. You're not going to let this go, are you? I worship Shah, the mistress of the night. The events in this diary sound like the handiwork of my brothers and sisters. Now that you have the truth, please don't make a big fuss about it. Then it's your own fault for not asking. The trail's long cold, but perhaps. We can discuss this later. I can Let's hardly go. hardly wrap my head around what we've just heard. Let's list up the facts, shall we? There are other people here with tadpoles in their heads. These people don't realize they have tadpoles in their heads. They can hear the tadpoles speak to them and they think it's a new god. I don't know about you, but to me, none of this makes any logical sense. And yet, I suspect something intelligent behind it all. Some carefully nurtured scheme. But let's not lose sight of what we've learned here. What joins us and what separates us from these true souls. They hear a voice we do not hear. A voice that binds them in servitude. As long as we're possessed of our own free will, I venture to say there's hope for us Do yet. you feel as flattered as I do? A cambion came courting us. Quite right. Either Daddy had a tryst with the succubus, or Mummy with an incubus. What they lack in kind-heartedness, they make up for with horns and tails. Still, don't let his bluster fool you. All that talk of desperation, it merely illustrates his own. I think he wants something from us, badly. And in that knowledge lies our opportunity. our souls. But I suspect that's but his opening offer. Let me play the devil deals advocate. The man is too eager. Do not dismiss his offer out of hand. Raphael is a cambion, and what is part human is entirely fallible. By figuring out his true intentions. Fact one. There's something very strange and very powerful about our tadpoles. Fact two, a devil offers to take it away. What if the tadpole is what he really wants instead of the customary price that is our souls? If I'm right, there's a mighty bargain to be made. Remember his Cormirian rhyme? Down came the claw. Perhaps we should start growing our nails. Great talent or not, no druid can cleanse an embedded tadpole. Give no credence to such fantasy. Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. 
To all questions, the Kalir Library harbors answers. A gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. Not books, but slates. Wisdom so profound it is etched into stone. Truth as perfect as the Queen who decreed it. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more, infinities upon infinities. I understand much beyond your comprehension. More to the point, I know the cure for our condition. It is imperative we locate a crash. You do well to observe more and question less. We find this Zoru in the Red Hunter's camp. He will point us to a crash. There we may be purified. Yes, in great detail. It starts with a fever and memory loss. Then you start to hallucinate. Your hair falls out and you bleed from every orifice. Your bones will change form. Your jaw will split to allow room for four great tentacles. All skin will turn to gore and be shed to reveal new flesh underneath. Then you have ceased to exist, and a Mind Flayer is born. Because I do not intend to let this happen. Not to me, and if you stick with me, not to you. We must find my kind and be rid of the Parasite. It's as simple as that. The first symptoms should have long since started, though. That is what puzzles me. Yes, if you give it no further thought. But anomalies lead to surprises. Bad surprises. Besides, what hasn't happened may yet come to pass. I expect I am your first. I suppose I am as alien to you as you are to me. I know of your kind, but I do not often encounter them. That large, fleshy nose of yours looks like a mistake. It was an observation, not a compliment. No matter. I do not intend to stay long in this place. Chuck, you believe you can survive without me? A practical choice. 